Hello there, my name is Lanius and today I will be talking about Slackware. So I have it like hmm, coming for quite a long time. I believe my first video I wanted to make on the channel about, you know, or maybe one of the first videos was about Slackware but I, f I finally haven't recorded it and I'm looking every once in a while on the screen if it's recording because I don't know what have I done but um, it stopped it's uh, a second take if you will anyway uh, so it was one of the first videos I wanted to actually make because I kind of have a soft point for Slackware and well my previous video was about Endeavor OS and how great it is and don't get me wrong it is really a great system and I can recommend it to every you know, kind of experienced or intermediate user that wants to you know dip the toes in some arch uh, distro <coughs> but yeah but I'm no longer on Endeavor OS even though I said I'm I'm probably converted to being the arch user long term but I guess uh, I guess I'm not. So, I think I already have spoken about my history of Linux distribution, so I guess I won't be repeating that, but Slackware was one of my first distributions that I've actually used. Uh, or well, maybe not one of the first, but when I became kind of uh, less of a total noob in Linux. I was using Slackware for quite a while and after returning to daily driving Linux at first I was just using Ubuntu but then I switched to Slackware and my experience was pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I believe I already said the story, but uh, anyway, so now I'm on Slackware again and I also I realized that I was doing a few things wrong and that my experience is way better I guess. But let's talk about the distribution itself. So there is a few misconceptions about Slackware going around, which is that it's old, that it's uh, unmaintained, and well, and that it has no package manager. So all of these are not true. I mean, okay, Slackware is old, but so is Debian, right? Debian is only a little younger than Slackware. <coughs> and it is maintained. And honestly, software on a Debian stable is older than on Slackware stable. <laughs> Maybe with an exception of uh, 14.2 version, which uh, stayed for quite a long time because of some uh, problems. But Slackware Current, which I'm using right now, and Slackware 15, which is a st is a uh, latest stable. Uh, release 
they aren't that outdated they are actively developed they have quite new packages especially the current <laughs> the current version which is you know is a bit behind uh, distributions like Arch Linux but it's still quite new software there is quite a lot of software and <clears throat> and yes Slackware has some interesting approach to installing software which is probably why many people think that there's no package manager because uh, basically a uh, base uh, Slackware installation I mean recommended Slackware installation is installing the full distribution which is kind of like installing a uh, whole uh, official repository <laughs> I mean with some mm, exceptions because the, there is some quote unquote I mean not quote unquote because it is actually called extra uh, repository which has some additional packages like uh, some newer PHP some other things <coughs> but basically you install kind of full official repo full distribution contains like mm, whole base repository which is a lot of applications just with the one one of the reasons why I had problems with Slackware before because I wanted to Mm, kind of slim down the number of packages because I was using KD Plasma at the time and you know huh, there were like every uh, K application in existence installed and since uh, Slackware's approach to uh, package management which is uh, no dependencies tracking it was pretty challenging to not break something <laughs> so in general you really shouldn't uh, remove uh, uh, the core packages especially if you are using like KD Plasma so you will have really handpick what applications you can remove or what you cannot I tend if I'm not going to use plasma which I'm not using I usually just don't install uh, the whole uh, KDE uh, application uh, KDE packages group kind of I don't remember how it's called but basically there are all of the Plasma and KDE applications I don't install it, I only installed uh, two packages which were needed for some slug builds which is the other thing but uh, but yeah so Slackware has a package manager it's Slack PKG by default it just uh, it's just used to install updates, install the extra packages, to remove packages, which you should be careful doing it. But it also has an extension called Slack PKG Plus, which allows adding some additional repositories. And there is kind of, mm, they say, few like semi-official repositories maintained by Eric Hamel Hamelers, Hameliers I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name but also known as Alien Bob there he has really a bunch of packages there he has a restricted repository with some you know restricted packages like non-free 
or something or not fully free I'm I don't know what I'm talking about because I didn't really look much into this what why they are restricted I guess there are some codex which may be not really mm, free in USA or something like that also there is multilib repository which basically can make your uh, 64 bit system multi leap so you can use uh, 32 32 32 bit uh, programs like steam for example yes slackware has steam i mean in alien bob repositories there is steam there are some other popular packages there is flat pack And yeah, there are also um, some other repositories like uh, Slack only, <coughs> which is kind of like chaotic AUR for Arch, but for Slackware and Slack builds, which are, I think, the most uh, recommended way of installing software, even though it's also unofficial which is kind of like a UR because there are just you know basically a build scripts that build a package and there's quite a number of them maybe I will show you <laughs> some of them So, there it is, it's slackbuilds.org, as you can see, there are, you know, quite quite a, a big <laughs> backlog of these builds, but of course the newest one is for Slackware 15, there are some uh, categories, mm. And as you can see, there is quite a number of these packages. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, but the simplest, or maybe not really simplest, but you can just install the packages from here manually, let's say Rofi. So what you would need to do so you have an information here that this requires this package so you would need to install this package first and what you actually do here you download the slack build you download the source code and then you just run the slack build as a root <coughs> it creates the package then you install the package and you're basically done so the slack builds is kind of a main f uh, reason why it is recommended to install the full slackware repo because even though slack builds kind of track dependencies but it is assumed that you have the whole uh, slackware um, installation so <coughs> if something is missing then then you might have a problem but what you can do is use a command like slack pkg file search and let's say hmm what could be missing let's say something like cmake I, ha I have some issue with uh, something from cmake missing and uh, uh, some from plasma but I don't really remember now, but let's see. So it just found applications, uh, packages which, coin, which contain uh, files that match uh, CMake. <coughs> so what I actually have uh, installed from the Mm, from the KDE 
set of applications. There's some CMake modules and K window system needed by Quantum. And that's basically it. I have only the mm, XFCE set and pretty much all other sets. I believe I also removed Emacs because, well, I don't use Emacs <coughs> because Emacs has its own kind of set where there's, well, Emacs, right? So this is the, so I was talking about the Slack bit. So Slack builds, it's kind of a UR, but it is maintained by a team not uh, like just the community where everyone could put anything there <coughs> so they are usually not broken and well maintained just maintained by a team but what is the as i found out the best way to manage Slack builds, which I haven't been doing when I was using Slackware before because I was just using, you know, the manual way. But the best tool I found is SBO tools, which is really great. It, of course, tracks the dependencies. <coughs> mm, the other nice tool, but it doesn't really track dependencies, but it has some additional tool to, to do it. Oh, it's not in Slack builds. I guess it's only on its own page where you just have the mm, package to download. So yeah, that's here. <coughs> and other nice package which I actually used uh, right before I uh, stopped using Slackware is SLPKG, which is also really cool. But what I find really interesting about the SBO tools is that it allows you to set some options before building which I'm not sure if SLPKG allows because I haven't used it for a while. But these are kind of like AUR helpers for Slack builds. So as you can see, there is a lot of software. It is maintained. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, this desktop can look slightly familiar because it's pretty much the same desktop I had on Endeavor OS. So it works pretty nicely. I don't really remember that I'm using Slackware like ooh, this old distribution because everything looks kind of modern, I guess, kind of nice. So that, for that reason, I had to put this Slackware logo here so I could remember I'm using Slackware, by the way. And yeah, so so I guess I busted the myths about Slackware. Uh, of course, it's not, you know, new user friendly <coughs> because yeah, the, the fact that it doesn't track dependencies is already something you have to get used to. But it, it is kind of easy to, um, to just, you know, uh, work with it. Because, for example, uh, Alien Bob's packages have information about dependencies. You just have to check. Uh, if there are some dependencies but you will have to install them manually the package manager won't do it for you but there is a uh, fork of slackware I mean fork uh, a spin or a distro based on slackware 
Salix that has its own package manager which tracks dependencies, which I guess is kind of nice because it has quite a lot of packages as I've uh, seen, which is nice. But of course, there could be some issues with installing Slack builds because it doesn't, you know, provide the full installation of Slackware. So you will would have to <coughs> make sure that all the required packages are installed, which might be tedious at times. Also, the Slackware installation isn't really that hard. It's uh, guided by menus in a text mode, of course. <coughs> Maybe I can show you this. But Slackware also has a uh, live version, which you can just take for a test drive, which is, let me find it. <laughs> so yeah, of course the default ISO is just installer, but there is uh, a um, quite a selection of ISOs which have live environment, which you could also uh, just install to a USB with when the persistence quote unquote so you can have your uh, this distro on a USB stick which you can later install to disk which is pretty nice I mean it feels kind of standard for any distro and it is also on Slackware, so I guess Slackware is not that mm, old, outdated thing. I mean, it is of course a little more, you know, traditional approach. And I guess at the moment the new ISO for current is being built because it's not here, it's only the build log. So. The ISO is updated like every time Slackware current is updated, which, which is not true for some rolling distros like I believe Void Linux had some quite old ISOs, also Artix. I think uh, showing you the installation is kind of not really a point because it's not a traditional distro review because I will be showing you like whole package repository <coughs> but as I've already said so Slackware has quite traditional approach to everything it uses uh, sysv init not systemd which might be a uh, either a uh, advantage for some system D haters out there which well for a, a while I also was one of them <laughs> or it could be a problem because you know, system D has its perks and there are some applications that require system D <coughs> But honestly, I, the moment I'm not using any application that requires it. And I was mainly, uh, I had the biggest appeal of system D for me was that I could use a Pro Proton VPN uh, official application, which turned out to be trash. And I haven't used it anyway. So, also Slackware is very, you can basically make it into what you want, which is 
I guess true with every distribution, but you know, Slackware that kind of doesn't limit you at all, even more than other Linux distributions. Like you know, as I already said about the uh, lack of dependency tracking, so you won't have a problem that you just want to remove one thing. But it is kind of <coughs> linked with some other packages, so it removes like something that you wanted to not be removed. Also, it's one of the few distributions that where you where where you can actually just replace the init system with something else. <coughs> I was actually using run it. Uh, before when I was uh, the last time I, I used Slackware, this time I haven't uh, really gone into messing with the init system <coughs> because I believe I don't really need that. I mean, I really like run it, but you know, it's always some additional maintenance for the system because you know you would have to basically make every uh, service you have or you install something new <coughs> then you would have also you would need to provide the run it uh, service basically for it unless you just want to uh, kind of run the regular service which has which is just a bash bash script because it's you know csv in it so that's pretty easy. I mean, it's it's funny because I keep saying that everything in Slackware is so simple, but for this the but for this reason it's also not really easy because other distros do a lot for you out of the box, and in Slackware you kind of have to take care yourself about some stuff like I already said the dependencies uh, also you know some adding new services then you actually need to add them to a to an init script so they are started with the system yeah so I kind of went back and forth I've lost my train of thought a few times I also tried to smoke a pipe in the intro, but for some reason OBS stopped a recording while I was doing this and also I have some ancient tobacco I haven't smoked in really really long time and it didn't really want to uh, burn. <laughs> so I guess it's a little mess this video and I was kind of mm, really <laughs> slacking with the videos recently but I hope I would be able to make some more videos I'm not really sure if uh, making videos more videos about Slackware like some more uh, in detail how to manage some things would be really interesting but I also have some other topics to talk about like uh, some distributions I wanted to talk about but I haven't yet some uh, some more videos about Vim and I already forgot what other topics I had but don't worry I have them written down so in case I wouldn't have an idea for a video, I have it somewhere. I think I already forgot how to make videos, so I guess I will be wrapping this one up. I'm recording for too long, but it includes like a few minutes of silence when I got some brain fart. So anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.
but they are just some, uh, some kind of uh, I don't know. Anyway, he, there 